Today we're working on a 2007 Toyota Sienna with a 2G RFE engine. It is a 3.5 liter V6. The fault codes are, that are in memory, let me show you those. And uh, you can see we have a 171 and 174 system lean codes accompanied with a mass airflow circuit range performance problem. I was told by my friend Pete Latour here, I'm at Latour's Auto, that uh, this was at two different dealerships that couldn't fix it. And I'm looking at these codes and I'm thinking, what, really? I mean, this is screaming a mass airflow sensor problem. Would you agree? Uh, we have a mass airflow circuit range performance code and two lean exhaust faults. Now, I have seen in the past many times a big vacuum leak cause a mass airflow fault code. The reason it would do that is airflow is moving past the mass airflow sensor not being uh, registered and so it throws the mass airflow signal off based on RPM and you get a code. Uh, you'd also have lean exhaust fault. So we, we could have a vacuum leak here but the way this is acting so far and how well it's idling, uh, I, I think it's not a big vacuum. So let's look at some freeze frame data. Let's look at some fuel trim numbers and try to put this together and see if we can point toward the mass airflow as being the cause of this fault. Cool, our two lean codes, we have data for it. I have a mass airflow grams per second of 51.7, uh, vehicle speed of 37 mile per hour. Uh, throttle position looks like throttle position two is 67 percent. Uh, throttle position percentage, this one says 32 percent. Throttle sensor positions 14.9. So we're at part throttle is how we'll look at that. Uh, what is my RPM? RPM is a good one for me. Engine speed is 2200 RPM. Calculated load is 91%. Interesting. Um, so let me ask you guys this. If this was a vacuum leak, what would my throttle angle, RPM, and engine load be? So I have a lean code. Remember, a lean code can set, uh, a vacuum leak can set lean codes. But the thing about it is vacuum leaks affect the lower engine operating range more than they do the upper engine operating range. So what we would expect to see is idle speed, closed throttle, and that's when we'd see our um, our lean conditions the most. Let's see how lean we are. Let's look at short term, long term. Short term on bank one is 17.93. So I'm looking here. Uh, short term fuel trim on bank two is 18. 71 long term on bank one is 34 percent and long term on bank two is 34 percent so we have a total trim of roughly 34 44 uh, i don't know roughly about 50 52 percent total trim that's a huge number that's enough info for me there's no reason for me to show you the other freeze frame data capture. This is an under load condition. This, this is a mass airflow problem or this is a fuel pressure problem. Uh, it's one of the two. And uh, we should be able to handle this pretty quickly by simply taking it for a test drive. Let's look at our mass airflow uh, data. Let's look at our O2 at wide open throttle. Let's look at our calculated load numbers. Now, th this is a wide band upstream. So the wide bands are a little different. For me to use these, at wide open throttle, what I need to know is which way is rich, which way is lean. And, and, and again, this is a process number, so these wideband sensors are, are unique in how they operate. They operate off of a milliamp uh, signal and then it gets converted to voltage and put on the scantle. So this is processed. Let me see what it does on a rev. is actually falling on its face now. I'm now reconsidering. Um, 
just didn't do this until now. I literally uh, was uh, started the car up and before I turned the camera on, I read the codes and I was just revving it a couple of times. I'm like, ah, oh, this is a, it's a mass airflow issue. And now maybe, maybe I'm thinking it's not. Like the way this is running right now, there's no, I'm a wide open throttle right now. I am a wide open throttle. And with the mass, uh, the airflow sensors, you see them at five volts. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's as lean as this, as this is going to be. We might have a fuel pump there. That one's running good. That's good. Not a dirty math. You know what? Uh, as I'm looking at this calculated load number, you know I'm hitting. I'm hitting 100 percent. I need to make it do that again. So I really want to know what my fuel pressure was doing there. It could be a math that that took a crap, but I, I'm not so sure. Let me see if there's a fuel pressure service port. I don't. I don't think there is. Testing fuel pressure on this is not is not going to be fun. Well, I need to duplicate this fault again. I think test drive is in order here. Let us see if we have a data PID for our fuel pressure. Fuel pump speed. Fuel pump SP control. So this has maybe a variable speed pump. It's mentioning speed, but might just be for noise reasons some of these cars do that you know why couldn't I just have a Schrader valve to connect to and put my gauge on to be done with it that's the decision I need to make here and what direction I need to go I was talking mass airflow the whole time until I felt what it did and it was misfiring it was bad like I couldn't even rev it I, and the vehicle stalled on me there it is there we go wide open throttle right now dying dying Dying, dying, check engine lights flashing at me. I'm literally at wide open throttle right now. Wide open throttle. I don't care about my trims, but I do um, wonder what my air fuel sensors are showing. I mean, it was at five volts, ultra lean. Right now, this check engine lights flashing at me. I can't drive it. And I here's the thing: we we can do a quick test, just unplug the mass airflow and see how it reacts. Um, I don't mind doing that, just given how difficult it is to check fuel pressure. I, I think I'm going to do that. Not all of these cars have good backup strategies, but I'm I'm going to try it. So here's the plan: as I do this one-handed, if I unplug this. And this car starts running better. Uh, car stalled. I'm okay with that. See if this car has a good backup strategy with the MAF unplugged. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Start stall. So. Oh wow. It revs great. It isn't idling very well. But at the same time, it might not be idling well because the fuel trim data is pegged, pegged rich. Let's pull in our trims here. It feels like it's getting better as I'm sitting here. Let's see if our short terms are way negative. No, this is not even in closed loop right now. I know that by looking at my trim numbers, you can tell open or closed loop by just looking at what your short term trim is doing. It could be with the MAF unplugged that it won't go into closed loop. It is possible. You see they're not moving. See this calculated load number. 
Interesting, the calculated load still gives me a value, but the vehicle load does not. Let's go test drive this thing, see how it does. I'd be surprised if this is a math issue, just the way that it reacted. This is a test drive with the math unplugged. Uh, if this is a fuel pressure issue, yeah, dude, I'm, I can't even drive it. I'm falling on its, it's falling on its face right now. I'm turning around. I'm not going far at all. Cannot drive it. This is not a mass airflow issue. My suspicions were incorrect going into this. Fuel pressure is what I need to check on this man, this car. There's wide open throttle right now, not even moving. Basically starving for fuel. Get that airflow sensor. When I was at wide open throttle, it was five volts. It's pegged lean. We have a fuel delivery issue. I, I think we have a pump that's crapping out. So I need to get a fuel pressure measurement next. You saw our freeze frame data was positive 50% under a load or under a higher RPM condition. I didn't get a chance to show that to you live. I saw the same thing. Short term trim was at zero at idle. As I raised the RPM, it went 15, 16, 17% on top of the 30 some percent the long term was. So under higher RPM, we are more lean. So we're looking at dirty mass airflow, low fuel pressure. Those are your top two and the way that this is acting. And again, I have the mass airflow unplugged. So um, the mass airflow uh, is not a factor right now. We're in a backup strategy and it's still falling on its face. So I'm, I'm moving away from the mass airflow. I think maybe the calculated load numbers told us that too. That was up at 100% on the calculated load uh, number. Um, but um, yeah, there's variables with that too. You saw I unplugged the MAF and you know, why did we have 66% engine load with it unplugged at idle and stuff that I can't answer for you right now, but I know symptom wise, uh, and what I'm feeling right here with this car falling on its face, my upstream O2s, my wideband sensors reading flat lean, uh, fuel pressure's next. I, I gotta connect the fuel pressure gauge. I did some research and I found out this is a uh, two-speed pump and it has a, a um, resistor right here on the firewall that um, is providing our low speed. Could be a factor in what we're dealing with with this car. Uh, we'll have to do some measurements, but I need to adapt my fuel pressure gauge and unfortunately the one fuel line I can get to is underneath the throttle body. It's not going to be fun to do. You know, a simple Schrader valve, people, you know? Frustrating. And, uh, you know, one check that takes me 30 seconds to do is going to take me 45 minutes to do. And I'm turning the camera off. I'm not keeping you guys with me for... 45 minutes while I fight a fuel pressure gauge into this fuel system. All right, I was able to access the fuel line actually underneath the air cleaner housing down in this area. Uh, I'm still in need of the correct adapters. Um, I do not have this red tape sealing this line. This is the correct size line, but it didn't have uh, a, a um, I don't know what you want to call it, just like a, a knurled end, like a, a piece that the fingers would clamp onto. So I just have the tape keeping it together. It's not sealing it. It's just holding the line from coming apart. Uh, should be good for my test. I'm not going to road test it like this, but enough for me to check my fuel pressure, at least while we're sitting here. I got no fuel pressure. I'm finally getting some fuel pressure. <laughs> Sweet. I'm laughing because this is going to be our issue. It's definitely a pressure issue. Watch that gauge. We're at 10 pounds now. It took a long time to get up there. 45 PSI. Let's see what this pressure does on a snap. Uh, I can't snap it from out here. It's drive-by wire. Damn it. I need Pete. Nice. We're down to 30. I haven't even done anything yet. Just snap the throttle for me, Pete. Ah, 
Drop to 25 on a snap. Gotta do it again. Drop to 25 there again. Uh, now what we need to worry about is this dual stage pump. So now I'm down to I'm down to 27. It, it's continuing to drop. Let's see if we can make it do what it was doing before. P, this is either going to be a pump or it's going to be a uh, power and ground issue, and I got to verify that. It's got a two-speed pump. It's got a resistor right here, come here, on the firewall. This is giving us uh, low speed right here, and I got to figure out when, where, and why it's doing that still. I haven't looked at the electrical diagram, but you guys, my viewers here, you can see my fuel pressure is continuing to drop. This would match my under load lean condition. Um, the mass airflow code that was in memory is a result of low fuel pressure. So what happens with low fuel pressure, the engine's not breathing right, you open the throttle, the car falls on its face, computer doesn't like what the, it sees from the mass airflow, sets lean exhaust fault codes, absolutely a fuel pressure problem. And I'm not sure again when this is used, it's probably idle and low speed and then wide open throttle, it's gonna cut it out probably with the engine uh, during cranking, they wouldn't use this either, but I, I have to look at a diagram. Definitely a fuel pressure issue. A little experiment here. Let's see what happens when I unplug it. So the fuel pressure's dropping. Snap it to wide open. You can see the pressure climb there. Snap it again. Yeah, you can see we're switching out of that resistor circuit with the resistor unplugged you see we're dropping even lower so what that tells me is this resistor was working there resistors plugged back in although my pressure is even higher now snap it Pete should not be happening we should not see those pressure drops power and ground checks coming up next I got to do a little bit of diagram homework first and then I'll bring you guys back up to speed the control for the relay I'm not worried about I don't think we'll just talk about the load side here for now we have a normally closed contact so between the black and red this one and the red wire those two guys actually those guys are attached all the time EFI main so EFI main is doing what? That's power. So this come what's that? C slash OPN relay. What is that? I don't know the abbreviation there. Um, if you follow this fuse right here, guys, uh, that would be power. And then when this relay makes a magnetic field, it's going to close this switch, which is going to send that power up this way this is my EFI main relay it's gonna feed that circuit it's gonna come over here feed this power comes over here feeds this circuit power and then when this C uh, slash OPN I think it says I don't have my glasses with me uh, when that closes that blue line power is gonna come over here feeds the control side of this relay and feed this fuel pump relay and then feeds the load side too so um just some quick observations there so i really need to focus on these three the black red the red and the blue black and see where they're going and then we may, might be able to make heads or tails out of this there's our resistor so black red is one red to the resistor blue black okay so resistor is here, my pump motor is here. So red and blue, black are the resistor. That's two and three. Let me go back a page. So these two are for the resistor. The black red pin one is my pump. Let me bounce back and forth here. Yeah, that's my pump power feed is the black and red. So how does it work on the two different speeds is what we want to know. This is the feed to the pump. And right now it is attached all the time to this red wire, all the time. And 
it is also attached right now with this closed to this maybe that stands for closed open relay that's probably it's going to be what's involved with my two speed these two relays this relay needs to be closed for my fuel pump relay to turn on because this would provide power this switch closes here provides power to the coil and to this load side what happens when it switches to here circuit opening relay that's what it stands for Toyota Toyota's used a circuit opening relay as their fuel pump relay forever I've taught my classes that for years C slash open relay that's the circuit opening relay I got it okay low speed would be if I send power this way because the power so if we if we have this circuit opening relay close send power up this way and energize this coil that will close this switch will move over to here if that switch moves over this one will send power down the black and down the blue black so power would come that way that's on pin three not pin three but number three on the diagram so that would come in here and then the power would go through the resistor come out on the red wire okay and then the red and the uh, black and red which is the pump feed are tied together on the next page so um, again power is coming this way on the blue through the resistor out this way on the red it would come in this way the red wire and it's attached to here so even though this relay would uh, uh, or at, even though the switch would be over here sending power on the blue wire these are still electrically connected here and here see the splice right where my mouse is there's a splice there so those two would be connected the pump would run in low speed so that would mean fuel pump re here's what happens for the for the pump to run in low speed the fuel pump relay needs to be energized this coil needs to be energized and so does the circuit opening relay okay circuit opening relay uh, needs to be energized as well that has to close for the pump to run in high speed the circuit opening relay needs to be on right uh, because that's providing my power feed uh, the EFI main relay needs to be on the circuit opening relay needs to be on we send power on this leg of the circuit and that power would need to be there because that's the power feed that's going to the pump what happens now with the fuel pump relay off is that switch stays attached so then what we're doing is we're sending direct power right here to the fuel pump see the splice power is going to come over this way sure it's going to also travel down the red line so power is going to come this way let me get my pen back in I want to make sure you guys are following me here's here's the way this is going to go this coil has to make a magnetic field the EFI main relay which closes the switch that's going to send 12 volts this way okay from the EFI main fuse up through the relay feeds other circuits of course comes over here and feeds my circuit opening relay all right this needs to make a magnetic field circuit opening relay to close this to send power to my fuel pump relay this needs to have power for my pump to run period needs to have power all the time for my pump to run so i know right now with my car running this relay is energized and this relay is energized without looking at the controls that's the way this is working if the fuel pump coil is off this switch maintains in this position so what i'm doing then is i'm sending power this way through here and it's going to go to my pump motor this way that's my black red wire battery voltage is going to go to my pump directly it is also tied in to the red wire which is the resistor and on the next page it's going to go through the resistor and then come back out on the blue wire sure we're going to send power that way but where's it going to go look it's not going anywhere so all we're doing is running the pump at full battery voltage full 12 volts with the relay off remember that off of the fuel pump relay is full power to the pump um, with the fuel pump relay turned on here's what happens so power is going to come this way of course feeds the coil computer controls the ground here for the relay coil energizes it makes a magnetic field pulls the switch this way so my power comes up here 
And now, instead of feeding onto the fuel pump circuit directly, we're now feeding through the blue wire, okay? And we're coming this way. And what we're going to do is, again, this is hard to do with my mouse, through the resistor, comes out on the red wire. Red wire then supplies power to the fuel pump through that splice up here, right here, on its way to the pump. And the pump is now, this is my FP on the next page, which has a ground. The pump's now running in low speed. Fuel pump relay on, low speed. Fuel pump relay off, high speed. When, where, how, and why, I don't think I really care for what I'm doing right here. What I want to do is I want to make this pump run in the high speed mode, I think. Can I force it to do that? See, I don't know. If I unplug the fuel pump relay, Let's see if that would work. If I unplug this relay, is that gonna force it no matter what? Let me see. No, it won't. I can't unplug the fuel pump relay. Everything has to come through the relay. Low speed and high speed has to come through the relay. Uh, normally close and normally open contact. So that's right in here. That needs to be there. All right, so what's the best way to attack this? It's going to be at this junction box, but well, we can do some voltage measurements on the red and the blue black. Let's do that first and see what we have. Um, we should have in the low speed mode, the red wire should show me full battery voltage in the low speed mode. Um, no, I'm sorry. In the high speed mode, the red wire will show me full battery voltage. In the low speed mode, power is going to go. I should show full power on the blue and black. All right, let's go do that. Low speed mode, blue wire should be full battery voltage. Wrong scale. Let's go 20 volt. Let's get some numbers in here. 13.7. There's your low speed mode right there. It's 13.7. What I expect, I'm going to have Pete snap this for me. What I expect to see here, guys, I expect to see this voltage line of 13.6 on a snap throttle. We go wide open. It should go lower because then it switches. It'll switch to the red wire here. Let me go to the red wire first. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you to snap it in a second. So we're at 12.4. So right now we're running through the low speed circuit. This resistor's fine. Power comes in on the blue wire wraps through the resistor first so it's 13.7 we're wrapping through the resistor coming out on the red wire and then it's feeding the pump okay um when we snap this this voltage should change go snap that to wide open for me do it again see that glitch see that drop in that signal do it again right there is the switch if, if i could make this thing stay at wide open uh, we would see a lot uh, a lot longer of a period of time where that's low. Um, go ahead, snap it again. This is on the red wire now. See that? There's your switch effect taking place right there to the high speed mode. Do it again, snap it. All right, so low speed and high speed are working. That's what that's telling you right there. Let me change my time base and show it to you one more time. Let's go to a 10 second time base. Go ahead, snap it. So right in there where the voltage went high is where the fuel pump relay shut off and the computer commanded the high speed mode. And, and you can see that my pump pressure is weak no matter which mode we're in. Go ahead and uh, can you see that gauge? I hope you can. I'm hovering around 25 PSI. Go ahead and snap it again. That's during the high speed mode. Guys, this does not, does not need a resistor. A resistor is not our issue. The last thing I want to do is a current measurement on this. And um, I'm not going to be able to measure the current flow in the high speed mode because it's attached inside in the relay and then feeds after the relay, after the box. But I will be able to show you low speed. So I can do that. This is going to need a pump, Pete. So what we're worried about here is power and grounds. Right, typical stuff we worry about with fuel pumps. And one of the things we see right away, we absolutely are seeing a 
uh, pump that is running. That's kind of low. Amperage is kind of low. Really horrible looking pattern. Uh, I say horrible looking because what, what I want to see is my up down my impulses on that but I'm averaging about four amps a current let's go back to a 10 second I'm not so much worried about the waveform characteristics as I am the current flow itself um, go ahead and snap that Pete you see the amperage drop right there the reason that that did that where it dropped to zero is it changes direction again I can't measure I can't measure my high speed pump current from here because inside there's that tie-in where when the relay shuts off remember when the, re the fuel pump relay shuts off is when we get high pressure and when the relay shuts off it's now sending current flow not through the resistor anymore um, it's sending it from the contact under the relay directly to the pump so I'd have to tap in in a different place to show you that uh, I don't know that I can uh, go ahead and snap it again Pete <laughs> right where that amperage dropped is your high speed mode um, I know my voltage is good measuring it here is really not going to help us it's going to be the same in the low speed mode when you get snap it yeah yeah we're not going to see it it does not matter where we go on here um, but the fact I have four amps of current flow constantly here tells me I'm not worried about my power and ground I mean, it was good here, but I'm saying in the back, you have to worry about it. Uh, shut the car off, Pete. Let's see how this reacts on initial startup. See what mode this goes into. I, I suspect it's going to go into a high-speed mode on startup. Uh, go ahead and start it, Pete. That's exactly what it did. Go ahead, start it again. Yep, cranking is high-speed mode. And uh, with the car idling, there's your low speed mode. Snap the throttle again. High speed load is, is when we have zero amps, where I'm at, zero amps and higher voltage on the yellow trace. Uh, shut it off and restart it one more time. Full battery voltage and then it lowers it. Got it again. Pete, no way I can tell you if your fuel filter's plugged up on this or not. Change the fuel filter when you do the pump. This needs a fuel pump, no question about it. Um, the only other thing, again, I could show you guys is if I have the right relay adapter and I don't have them with me right now, I go to the fuel pump relay and I could maybe show it to you there, the amperage change, because I could grab the circuit opening relay and then get the load side of that. Let me, let me double check the diagram real quick. Stay there. Circuit opening relay, see? That's gonna feed other circuits too. The output side of the circuit opening relay. It's just gonna be too difficult, it's not necessary. Um, again, amperage through this. Power switches when the relay is off our power will go directly to this red wire. Not here, but tied in under the box. The red wire and the pump are tied together. That dropped because I moved it. There's not a problem there. They're tied in under here. Yes, it's gonna send voltage this way, but it's not going anywhere. It's an open circuit. That's why our amperage drops. So when it switches to the high speed mode, fuel pump relay shuts off, which sends direct power to this red wire, but spliced down here, to the pump motor. That same red wire comes up to here and goes through the resistor to the blue wire, but that contact is now open, so it doesn't go anywhere. That's why we lose amperage up here. We have no amperage when it switches to high speed mode. That's what tells me there in itself that I don't need to go any further. One more time, snap that Pete so they can see it. Right now we're in the low speed mode. I have four amps of current. That should be enough in itself. That should be enough in itself. This low amperage to give me the proper fuel pressure and I believe it's like 40 or 50 on this not 20 I'll get you a spec before we end you see I'm in the low speed mode hovering around 25 it should not be um, snap the throttle high 
high speed mode and we had a pressure drop. So we're low pressure guys in both low speed and high speed modes. We are done. This thing has either A, a plug filter or B, a bad pump. And with 150,000 miles, I don't care. It's getting them both pump and filter. Um, go ahead and shut that off, Pete. I'm done with you. All I want now is a spec. Can I get a spec? Let's see if this will give me one. Fuel pressure, 44 to 50. During cranking and while idling, fuel pressure should be 44 to 50 PSI. So four amps of current flow, lower voltage running through this. Even at idle, I should be 44 to 50. Dual speed pump circuit, bad fuel pump. Hope you guys like that. Uh, frustrating for sure, man. You know, we, we go into this, um, job thinking uh, easy one mass airflow we got a mass airflow code some lean exhaust codes the fuel trim data matched that uh, again I apologize I didn't show you the live data but it matched the freeze frame showing us higher load lean conditions high load lean conditions I've been preaching this for 17 years um, that's how long I've been at Rosedale now um, a under load lean condition we're not looking for vacuum leaks mass airflow Actually, what I say to my classes is it's a fuel delivery problem. So I'll generalize the statement. It's a fuel delivery problem. Uh, and the two main ones we look at is low fuel pressure and a mass airflow issue. Uh, mass airflow was ruled out by a simple unplug it test. Car fell on its face, wouldn't drive, where initially when I started it, it revved good. So you can't always rely on the unplug it test because some cars won't run without the MAF. But when I initially unplugged it, it ran great, took it for a ride. Uh, it fell on its face telling me not the math move in the direction of fuel a little bit of a pain in the butt connecting my gauge but from there no problem a little bit complicated with the two-speed setup um, i didn't do my homework as far as why it probably has more to do with alternator loads than anything um, i am pretty sure that there is still a fuel pressure regulator in the tank that does the regulation it's not this the pump speed is not varied for in, in my experience on these is not varied for fuel pressure. Pump speed is varied on this model to simply save alternator loads at times of low speed where we don't need the pump running at full speed. That's why they're doing it. Um, so pretty neat that I can show you the methods up here. It's really awesome. I don't have to crawl underneath, uh, check my powers and grounds. I'm happy with four amps. What I'd like to do uh, is show you the initial turn on of the pump but to show you the initial turn on of the pump, uh, that would be in the high speed mode. And I can't do that because of where we are. I'd have to move some relays and adapt some things. And that would have been cool to show you. It's not necessary. Um, we're done. Bad fuel pump. Hope you guys like that. I will catch you next time. Some bonus material on this Toyota. I'm down at Latour's Auto again for a few other cars we're working on but the uh, fuel pump was replaced on this Toyota. So let's get some after numbers. Let's look at fuel trim first, and then let's see if I can show you both speeds of this pump this time. All right, let's take a look at these numbers. Let's look at your long-term memory and our short-term, and what we wanna see is some counter numbers here. Apologize for the glare. Just trying to get this done quick. That's what I want to see. See whether the short term came into play, how negative it went right off the bat. Yeah, that is a fix. Positive 30, minus 20. Kind of watch that for a minute. That's what we want to see. Now, I'm not connecting a fuel pressure gauge to give you guys after pressure readings. I apologize for that. It's just too much involved in connecting a gauge to this. Let's uh, raise the RPM, see what it looks like too. Yeah, minus 30 or positive 34, minus 20, minus 21 on the short term. If you guys have been following me long enough, you'll know that there are some variables with these trim numbers. As far as weighting goes, I have seen vehicles, especially the wideband systems, it seems like where the short-term and long-term numbers are not weighted equally. So if we did our, our total trims looking at these two, we're looking at 
12 percent when we're done so some of you might be thinking well that's not good uh, well I would agree but I have seen a, a system like this that once everything balances out these numbers end up being zero which tells me the short term is not weighted the same amount as the long term so that is a variable too I like this this is great these uh, negative trim numbers here uh, countering what the memory is definitely a fix let's go under and uh, see if we can get some amperage readings of that pump and then we'll wrap this up so power distribution box is here um, the Sun is really interfering with my video here right now so you have to bear with me the circuit opening relay the one that we were talking about is this guy right here this again. yeah this is my this one's my fuel pump relay. This is my circuit opening relay. If I unplug this, the car should shut off. This is the main supply to the pump. Yeah. So the reason it kept running for a second or two was residual fuel pressure. So this is the one we want to adapt to for our current measurement. Remember up here, the tie-in um, is not, both high speed and low speed do not go through this. So I could only show you low speed current flow when I measured here, and I wanted to show both. I'm pretty sure the circuit opening relay will allow us that. So what I need to do is I need to jump the load side of this circuit with a jumper wire and put my amp clamp around it. The thing about that is if I jump the wrong pins, I will cook whatever is controlling the control side coil. Now I was going to say computer, but I don't know if this is actually computer controlled or if it's ignition switch fed. I'll have to go back and look at the diagram. But I've gotten in trouble with these before. The one Nissan computer that I did cook years ago, I ended up jumping the two copper pins because I assumed that those were the load side and it ended up being the silver pins. Uh, but I am familiar with this style of relay and you can actually see the thickness of the copper pin compared to the silver pins and that's suggesting the load side is these two. Now we can do a quick resistance measurement or we can pop it, the internal guts out and take a look. It's just easier than breaking out my own meter. I am almost positive that it is the copper pins that are my load side. Yeah, If you look at the load side contact is where the switch is so this part this is your load side switch right here and it comes up to this copper area yeah it's this pin and then the other half load side is this one yeah so my load side is these two for sure don't do this wrong guys you jump the wrong pins. If you accidentally jump these two, you could cook a computer. All right, so jumper wire that I can put my ammeter around. I'm gonna use my kit I got from AES, this terminal kit. What I should be able to do is match up these. Looks like that one. There's two of those. And then what I can do, I'm just gonna place I have a jumper wire and if I wanted to I can measure voltage too but in our case this will be good enough for putting our amp clamp around it let's go to the car okay load side control side always scary you got to pay attention to what you're doing for sure All right, in that case this vehicle should now run Let's see what kind of amperage readings we get. Using my little camera here, guys. Sorry about that. A little bit further away from the mic, too. My voice. Putting the jaws in my amp clamp. 20 amp scale around this. All right, take a look at this screen. And uh, it's a whole lot different. We can now actually see our armatures, our commutator segments. Uh, and we're hovering around 9 amps of current. This would be, uh, this should be 
the low current side of this circuit. Let's uh, change our scale to a 20. Let's see what kind of amperage change we get when we switch modes. Yeah, average amperage right now is 8.8 .8 amps. You know what I need to do? I need to switch this over to that other wire. You saw the change there, but... See, I'm... I am dropping amperage. So can I not see both sides from here? I'd have to look at the diagram again. Uh, I didn't do this the first time. I should have. Let, let me connect it back up to where we were uh, yesterday or before the pump was changed. So I'm just back to the resistor. That's a huge difference. This is the low speed side of this system right now. So I'm, I'm running eight amps of current. We were running four amps before. Yeah, and that's what's happening. When, when this switches to the high speed mode, which we haven't seen yet, amperage drops to zero. Let me get you on a longer time base. I'm not worried about um, RPM of the pump or anything like that. Let's just look at this at a longer base. Watch what it does when this switches. When I, when I snap it to wide open, watch. Let's uh, get a little longer time base there for you guys. All right, so that amperage is switching to the high speed mode and I'm not catching it here. Let me switch it back to the relay connection now. I think we're gonna see the same thing. I, I think it's possible that we may not be able to do it this way. But I at least I'm showing you a after, right? Okay, no, we can see it. I just was on the wrong time base to see it. So I, I am correct on the relay side. Watch what it does amperage wise. I'll snap it. Nice. Pause that. And then uh, there you go. So uh, average amperage during this upper period here. Let's get a cursor in there. So what is that? Cursor two, amperage. Let's get a peek of one of these. I don't know where, you know, this is where my Pico is so much better. Looks like maybe about an 11 amp average. So about a two amp difference between the low speed and the high speed modes. There it is, the switch, the reason you have this spike that occurs here on the initial switch would be you're changing the circuit, that relay's opening, current flow's changing direction. So really momentarily, you're, you're taking the power away from that pump and then you're re-energizing it. So the reason you have that initial spike is because of that. And then the same thing when we switch back to the uh, low speed mode through the resistor. So uh, there it is before and after I'm sorry I didn't show you the high speed mode before would have been cool to show it had I thought about how to jump that relay circuit very simply like I just did it would have been uh, would have been helpful but you know not necessary low speed high speed mode looks like again roughly a 2 amp difference and again what I'm saying about this system is that is used for reduced alternator loads I'll maybe do some homework on this and you know put a note in here confirming that I don't see any other reason to use this mode low speed mode high speed mode about a 2 amp difference again thank you guys so much for joining me if you have any questions make sure you put them in the um, right underneath this video 
or better yet, join me on my forum, scannerdanner.com, and uh, post away there. I have uh, four moderators on there now that are were handpicked by me that uh, are really, really sharp guys, and they're helping me out, helping you out. They're helping me help you. So that would be Dylan and Noah and Tyler and new guy, Andy, thank you, the four of you, and all of the rest of you that are helping. There's more than just my moderators that are helping over there. Um, I could name names for sure but I'd be here all day so uh, join us on the forum let's talk about this stuff thanks guys I'll catch you next time